Hello everybody. In this session, I will explain the theory of Stern and Gerlach experiment. The Stern and Gerlach experiment gives the direct evidence to the existence of space quantization. This experiment is based on the behavior of atomic dipole in presence of non-uniform magnetic field. In uniform magnetic field, uh, the dipole experiences a torque and it tries to align itself in the direction of parallel to the magnetic field. So when this dipole is made to pass through the uniform magnetic field, it traces a straight line path without any deviation. Whereas in the case of non-uniform magnetic field, it not only experiences a torque, it also experiences a translatory force. So when dipole is made to pass through the non-uniform magnetic field, it deviates from its straight path. So in this explanation, let me derive an expression for the deviation, amount of deviation produced in presence of non-uniform magnetic field by the magnetic dipole. Okay. So for that, let me consider a small or a tiny magnetic dipole. Let CD be the magnetic dipole of length L and pole strength P. Okay, and which is inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal direction. Okay, and this dipole is placed inclined to the horizontal direction in the non-uniform magnetic field. It is acting in a positive x direction. So the magnetic field is non-uniform means the value of the magnetic field should keep on change with respect to the distance here. So this dv by dx usually we call it as a field gradient that is the change of magnetic field with respect to the distance and it is changing along a positive x direction. So the magnetic field at the point C is V. As the field is varying at every distance, the magnetic field at the point D will be B plus dB by dx into L cos theta. L cos theta is nothing but a component of this dipole along the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so due to this magnetic field, the force experienced by the dipole at the point C is given by P into B and this is acting in this direction. Okay, and the force experienced by the dipole at the point D due to the magnetic field B plus dB by dx L theta, L cos theta is given by this expression that is P of B plus dB by dx into L cos theta. So from these two values it is clear that the PB acting in this direction and PB acting in this direction constitutes a torque. Whereas this additional quantity that is P into dB by dx L cos theta is nothing but a translatory force. So due to this translative, translatory force there will be shift in the or the beam is going to deviate from its straight path. So let us arrive at the expression for that one. So for that let us consider let T be the time of passage of the dipole in the non-uniform magnetic field and it is given by L by B. Okay? So this I have written based on the equation velocity is equal to distance by time taken where time is nothing but distance by velocity. So the same way I have written here T is equal to L by B where L is the length of the path of the atom in the field and B the velocity of the atomic magnet. So whenever the dipole is having a velocity there must be an acceleration and the translatory acceleration due to translatory force is given by A is equal to Fx by M where Fx is the translatory force. Okay, As I mentioned here itself the translatory force is the product of P into dB by dx L cos theta that I have written here. So the translatory force is given by the expression this one. Okay. So acceleration is given by F by M. This we have written. I hope uh, you already know this one. This we have written on the basis of S is F is equal to M into A. Okay. So now to calculate a shift or a deviation, I am making use of the formula from the mechanics that you have studied in a first few say that is S is equal to ut plus half ut square. Okay. As u is the initial velocity, initially velocity can be taken as 0. So, I am using only the s is equal to half a t square. 
So in this one for the displacement I have considered the notation alpha here. Alpha is equal to half a t square. I have the value of a as well as value of t here. Substituting these two values we will get half into fx by m into l square by v square because t is l by p. Now substitute the value of fx from our previous expression that is fx I have taken once again here that is dv by dx into p into l cos theta. Okay. So in this step I have taken directly the uh, uh, what is this here dv by dx I have retained as it is now I will say half I have retained as it is dv by dx I have retained as it is and this uh, p into l I have written it as mu suffix s yes, this is nothing but a magnetic moment okay magnetic moment into cos theta so the pl i have replaced it by a expression magnetic moment here into cos theta and this quantity retained as it is and m is in the denominator as this being a component of the magnetic moment that along the direction of the magnetic field so the net magnetic moment acting on the uh, atomic dipole is given by mu here so this final expression for the displacement or deviation produced by the atomic dipole in presence of non-uniform magnetic field is given by this expression that is half into dv by dx into mu by m into l square by v square. If you know all these quantities we can calculate the displacement produced or deviation produced by the dipole in presence of non-uniform magnetic field. On the other hand if we know the uh, deviation produced even we can calculate a magnetic moment of the At atomic dipole okay magnetic moment of the atomic dipole so this is all about the theory of the stern and gerlach experiment actually this experiment is uh, performed to determine the magnetic moment at the different field strengths okay so accidentally the result were observed that this experiment is giving a uh, confirmation for the existence of space quantization so Either with the help of this experiment we can calculate a deviation produced in the atomic dipole or also the other values are known we can calculate a magnetic moment of the atom also. So this is all about the theory of the Stern and Gerlach experiment.